As the Bronx head out in the field, it's time to head to the commentary box and taking the reins this afternoon, Peter Basaltis. Thank you very much, James. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the second game of uh, the first weekend of NRLW. Some Broncos fans on hand for two games featuring the Broncos here at Bankwest Stadium this afternoon. And out come the Dragons. Shaley Bent on screen. The gun side, this Dragons team, when you have a look at a lot of these names uh, and reputations that they do have, and many of them, including Brittany Braley on screen, one of the very good players in women's rugby league. And there's Jess Sergis just walking past Kezi Apps. Speaking of Kezi, the New South Wales captain. Had a lot of injuries in the last couple of years, has Kezi Apps, but a devastating runner of the football. Look out if she gets into open spaces. That to have kickoff here. We just saw Maddie Studden. There's photo out in the middle there. of the ground. Uh, and we're just about field. ready for action. It'll be the Dragons to kick off. Yesterday's game was outstanding. The Warriors and the Roosters. I'm sure today's will be no different. We're in for a great okay, clash. Tom, this bumper afternoon oh, of Rugby League at Bankwest Stadium underway with this NRL clash. And expect a physical encounter between Ricky these two teams. Plenty of representative players in both lineups, plus Stick, some Kezi. bright young stars as hold. well hold. Hold, on debut for their respective teams this afternoon. Stand, Up the arm. Hold here. Rona Peters Point with a run points. just short of the halfway line. This is a good start for the Broncos. Lavinia Gould with some sharp work at hold dummy hold. half early. Hold here for us. Hold. Go for. Millie Boyle played it on that occasion after making 10 or so metres. Racy McGregor with the kick. Vete Welsh has it here for the Dragons and gets straight through. Gets towards the halfway line. Can't get past Chelsea Baker who makes the tackle. The cavalry comes. Outstanding run. Vete Welsh putting the Dragons now on the front foot. For Tumawala now. 10 in the Broncos territory. What a start here for St. George of Lawara. So Daniel Lacey, the coach, will be very happy. Nutty goes to Vete Welsh. Of course, Kimura Nutty, the 5'8 for the Dragons. Player of the match in last year's grand final. There she is with ball in hand. While playing, of course, for the Broncos. Don't work. Falling awkwardly in the tackle there is Holly Wheeler. Scott bent backwards. Yeah, she screamed out in pain straight away. And those around her were concerned. Let's have a look here. Yeah, she just got she got twisted back there. And Play the ball. Hold. Hold. Thankfully, she's Hold. very flexible. Gave her a bit of a scare. That's good that she's able to play on. There's Maddie Starden going short to Kezi Apps. They've combined plenty of times for state and country over the years. Now they get a chance to do it here at NRLW level. Matty Studden throwing a dummy, putting a step on, not falling for, though, by the Broncos' defence, a changeover on the last. Well, it was a sharp opening for the game, wasn't it? The two fullbacks having to come together after Vete Welsh made a brilliant run on kick return. And it was up to Chelsea Baker to make the stop. And the Broncos defended nicely for the rest of the set of six to defuse that situation. Nice and warm out here in the Golden West today. Beautiful conditions. Setting up for the big game this afternoon on Channel 9 between the Parramatta Reels and Brisbane Broncos. Sudden death semi-final. Yeah, what a great afternoon we have. Chelsea Baker on that occasion going to dummy half. He's Rona Peters. Five short of the halfway line. Ali Brigginshaw will she look to take the line on. She gets a pass away and a good one as well to Millie Boyle. Lavinia Gould out of dummy half. Fires a pass out to the centre. Now they've got a bit of room to move on that far side of the field. The kick though will go 
from Upton in the touch on the full, but a good set of six there from the Broncos, going almost one end, one end of the field to the other. Fast start to the game. Up here, Dragons on the cross. Of course, as we mentioned, we won five players ready, this Dragons team. We're part of the ready. Broncos Let's go, last year. Hold. It certainly is, and there's also uh, a player for the Broncos, Racy McGregor, who was with the Dragons last year. She's now with the Broncos, so there will definitely be a lot of feeling out there. But Gus spoke about the heat out there in the middle in that sunshine. It is brutal, so we'll see who's got the biggest engine come the 60-minute mark. Solid defence. We saw plenty of big hits yesterday. And today, no different, but there's a penalty on this occasion. Quick to get up, though, Jess Sergis after that one. I actually had an opportunity to watch the Dragons doing, girls Maddie? train the other night. I won't tell you where I was, but I actually got to see a training session. Very enthusiastic. They look good, too. Alana. Down here on the sideline, it is absolutely perfect. It's 27 degrees. The playing surface looks fantastic. So I think we'll see plenty of ball movement from the women out there. If we see a similar game to yesterday, there weren't many stoppages. So fatigue could come into the match at some point. And just a little side note, uh, Dragon Center on the right edge. Jess Sergis, it's her 22nd birthday today. So happy birthday to Jess. Uh, happy birthday, Jess. And she might have got the ball there in open spaces to on that far right hand side of the field here's Kimiora Nazi getting a pass away Holly Wheeler looks to spin in the tackle good opportunity here for the Dragons on tackle four Braley goes short Nazi into the line well read on that occasion and Brandon making the tackle Maddie Stutton puts a kick across field Steph Walker has it and then just she couldn't control it. Meg Ward doing a great job defensively for the Broncos. Yeah, well, that was great work by Meg Ward. And she's trying to G her teammates up. Good kick across field, right on the money. Meg Ward comes up with a huge defensive play on last tackle. That's it. Wait for it. ready. Hold. Yep. Go. Both teams having no trouble. Going from one end of the field to the other so far, and a lot of second phase play early on as well. Good energetic start to the game. Remembering also 30 minute halves in NRLW. And we've got that great rule as well with a 40 30. And your wrist is turning the victim of one of those yesterday. It depends what side of the coin you're on there, Salty. <laughs> Game outstanding for both teams. Here is Ali Brigginshaw. She's having a shot at a 40 30. The ball, though, doesn't kick on. And the fullback there for the Dragons, Vete Welch, has it just outside their own 30 now for this Dragons team. It's just Sergis tries to catch the napping, but the markers await to it there. Good tackle, Millie Boyle. Steph Mooker coming in for a run, made her origin debut this year for Queensland. Nutty into the line, causing the Broncos defenders all sorts of headaches. I don't know whether she's going to run or pass. That time she passed. That's a Mawala. Now that was knocked down by a Broncos hand as she knocked for the first time this afternoon. Look to offload. So the Dragons are going to scrum feed now in very good field position. A lot of excitement in the build-up for these girls. Look forward to this time of year for the NRLW. And the one thing I notice is that the more that these girls can play against each Six, other yep. at the elite level, right, the better side. they get. The standard just improves. Every time you come to watch come them play, you can see them growing okay. right. as individuals in. and as a team, All in. and indeed as a sport. Is a good run. Oh, and a one on one yes, steal. Yeah. That was beautiful Dragons work by the defensive line there. Racine McGregor, the ex Dragon, comes up with a beautiful strip on his captain, Kezzy Apps. Yes, would have liked that one on Apps. I was just about to praise Kezzy for the run. It's a sensational play from Racine McGregor. You now the Broncos looking to get into Dragons territory. 
Dragons yeah, yeah, yeah. defenders left to watch out for Lavinia Gould there in the headgear. Very sharp play goes to Brigginshaw. Now Net Brandner, another one of the ex Dragons as well. Hold here. Hold. Queensland Origin player Angela Rue and Net Brandner. Kick from Brigginshaw. He has a little bit too deep. Vete Wells takes it. Almost. In the middle, in the middle. Sky Tungai getting in the way, but the fullback doing well. Lively start to the game. Stand up together now, Billy. Brisbane forward, man. Hold. Square. Say square. Did you notice, Ruan, yesterday Go. Go. an increase in the physicality? Go. 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 Gus mentioned about the improvement that's been made, but yesterday's game, just from a commentator's point of view, just seemed. The, the, the physical nature of the game went up. Yeah, it was physical and it was a lot faster yesterday. There were very minimal errors and I don't think there was a penalty blown until the 16th or 17th minute. So we had a lot of flowing football yesterday, which is what I think every punter wants to see on the field. It takes a dream to commentate, to be honest. And we're getting a similar start to this game as well. Another good run there from Holly Wheel and now Brittany Braley goes to Kezi Apps. Three defenders in there on Apps from the Broncos. to Moala. Thought about pass, but then just went straight. It's the last. And 12 they go here. They go to Nutty for the kick. Shakai Tungai just surges, so looking to come down on it, but that is a brilliant take out wide from Tamika Upton. The Rockhampton girl on debut this afternoon for the Broncos NRLW team. Very well under pressure. I've been very impressed with Lavinia Gould this afternoon. She's one of the few sevens players that have come across into rugby league, and she's physically been really working hard through the middle with a lot of big bodies running at her. Now, Lavinia played a lot of football off the bench and in the back row last year in the NRLW. So, with Brittany Braley, the dummy half, moving over to the Dragons, it's opened up a, a starting spot for her in the dummy half position. And she's quite a skillful player. Looks like she's handling it well. She always had an impact coming off the bench when I watched her previously. Fair kick that one from Racine McGregor. Just got away from Beto Wells. Good chase from Amber Pilly. Oh, and here's a mistake. Steph Mooker. Lack of concentration there. Now the Broncos can go on the front foot. Well, this is the first time the Broncos are going to get a decent, good ball set here. They'll really, out with Ali Brigginshaw, be able to attack this line and hopefully either come up with points or another repeat set and see if they can build some pressure on this Dragons outfit. And it's key for the Dragons too because they've had the better of play, haven't come up with points yet. And a little disappointment like that turning the ball over. Sometimes, if you're not okay, thinking straight, down, you can see down, points down, straight down, away. So go, they've got to show their resolve here. They've got to dig in off the scrum loss. Get up there and put some pressure on the Bronco playmakers, who are very good. Good tackle there on Amber Pilly. No surprise to see when they get up. It was Kezi Apps. Here's Rona Peters. Seven away from the line. Gould a dummy half, they go down the short side. McGregor gets a pass away, trying to get for the line there as Paris Hall gets over. It's a penalty there, And it's going to be a penalty, though. Not try scoring. Got away to the line here, Amber Paris Hall. Well, it was a good read there by the right edge for the Broncos. They noticed that all the second rows and the big bodies had pushed into the middle of the field and they took advantage of the smaller defenders on that try line. Tasman Gray, forced back. Lavinia Gould. Oh, beautiful hands from Gould. And this time, Amber Paris Hall will get over the line to score the first try of the game. But put it down to some sharp work out of dummy half from Lavinia Gould. Yeah, it's obviously a set play. She gets out from dummy half, heads across field. Some extravagant dummying. She looked a little bit like Benny Elias here. A little bit of a dummy, and then back on the inside. And Amber Paris Hall muscles her way into the in goal. What's this? Bang! Good contact. On the number 12 there, Shaley Bent was just able to bend her back into the, the in goal area. But that was nice ball playing there from Lavinia Gould. 
Yani iyi olan ha. Targeted area for the Broncos. Definitely a targeted area, that right hand side of the field. They've sent a little bit of traffic there, but when they're attacking, they're certainly looking at that area of the field around that center and second row position, trying to get in the middle of them. So try and have a look for them setting up that play again in the same space. You know what I love most about the opening tries of this NRLW competition? Both have been by middle forwards. <laughs> That's what I love. Yeah. Thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> No surprises, Gus. You've been praising Lavinia Gould. No relation? No. I'll have to check the family tree. Could claim it, though. Yeah. yeah. She's having a very good start to the game. She's a bit clever for my side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Chelsea Baker. I walked past Chelsea earlier. The hair was stunning. Does a great job with it. And this time the kick waved away. 4-0 Brisbane. Four points to nil. Wait, wait. The Broncos in front. And they've had to do a lot of the defending in the early exchanges. Dragons came up with nothing. Brisbane with the first points and their first venture down into the Dragons 20 metre zone. Yeah, it's a telling blow, isn't it? First mistake the Dragons have made and Broncos have made them pay. Shows the experience in their side. So the Broncos now 10 short of the halfway line. Help! 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 Release! Cool. Oh. Held. Then Steph Hancock, who's coming out on the field. She was still moving there. I don't think she would have liked that call of held. Good set of six so far on the back of points. And Ali Brigginshaw with the team on the front foot puts a fourth tackle kick in. Vete Welsh has it. Staggered chase here from the Broncos. She tried to get on the outside of Lavinia Gould. But number nine for Brisbane makes a very good tackle. Steph Hancock there as well. He's Jess Surgis going for a run. Out of their own end now, the Dragons. And they're rolling up towards the halfway line as well, very nicely at the moment. A lot of one-out play. It's when they look to go wide to the likes of Sergis and Apps that the Broncos defenders are really up to make sure they're up to the task. And the other player as well, Kimura Nutty. Player of the match in last year's NRLW Grand Final. This time gets caught with the ball. Matty Studden has to rush a kick. Upton has it here for Brisbane. And she'll charge it into the Dragons defenders. While the Dragons were on the back foot a little bit there and a few one outs, there was a couple of times where they really won the ruck and they could have got a penalty. It could have gone either way, but unfortunately couldn't get the roll on. The thing I've loved about the Broncos' attack, though, is that they're getting onto the advantage line really, really quickly. And another great run there by their outside back, Meg Wood. And then it's a little bit sloppy in the end there. She had some attention, did Meg Ward, from Kizzy Apps, who was in there to defend her. She's not happy. Seem to be yeah, just sloppy from there, Meg Ward. Well, it's one of the warmer days we've had in Sydney for a long time. We can get a, a spring day like this in September. And as the perspiration starts to build, that makes the ball a little more difficult to handle. We've got the Broncos players arriving. There's Alfie Langer in the middle. He's not playing today, but you'll see plenty of him. On these kinds of days, would you condone the use of the sticky spray? Guys? I wasn't a sticky spray fan, mainly because it didn't come off till about Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Walk around the same cup of coffee for three days. 
used to annoy me. I figured you didn't need it if you could catch. But. Oh, strong hit there on Kezi Apps. And none other than Ronna Peters. Yeah. She is a beast through the middle, and she looks like she's injured there on the ground. Kezi Apps, and Ronna Peters is such a physical presence in the middle of the field. Look at this contact straight up, shoulder. But the good thing with Ronna, she actually has some ball playing ability as well, so she can move the ball nicely. Without in, in defense there, <laughs> what a good read. Well, she got it twice. The initial collision knocked her to the ground, but then she came in to finish her off. Tackle three. As he gives her a smile and says, I'll be back. <laughs> got the number plate of that truck that hit her and Up together. Steph Billy. Looks Lock a return square. serve oh. from Shaw at some stage during the game. But here's Nutty putting a little kick in. They're flying through. That is a beautiful kick and a great try to Shakia Tungai, who is in for the Dragons. And they hit back with a beautiful try laid on by the 5'8". Well, while Kezi Apps was down injured, it looks as though those girls were just scheming a little bit down that right-hand edge. And a lovely kick in behind the line. Nutty showed put the ball in it's a beautiful try yeah, yeah. Alana that's very very clever play from Nati while Kezi Apps was down it actually gave them time to come up with a little bit of a game plan there she kicked it early it was the fourth and Tungai out on there on that right edge, along with Jess Surgis. It wouldn't have mattered who out of the two got the ball. They both have electric speed, but she was able to get the job done to level up to four all. Let's see if she can convert. Well, Shakaya Tungai, she is a fantastic finisher. During the country at the national championships this year, she was fantastic for New South Wales country as she lines up here to try and put the conversion on the board. But the danger of a stoppage in play like that as a defensive team is that you switch off a little bit, you take a little bit of, of the heat and the fire out of the defensive line. Played three games last year. Tungai. Oh, she's a goer, this girl. Mm. It's a pretty handy kicker as well. Kizzy Apps is coming from the field. We'll get an update on that very soon. Kick from the sideline, waved away. It's for all. Good start to the game. We're all locked up at four all with just over 10 minutes left in the first half. It's the Dragons now. They feel a little bit better about themselves having registered some points. They had all of the going early on in the contest. Right, down to you, Alana. Kezi Apps, the Dragons captain, has just left the field. She caught that knock just before the try, so she's being tested for HIA. We'll keep you updated. A big blow for what the Dragons if they lose Kezi Apps for the rest of the afternoon. Let's hope she'll be able to come back in the second half at some stage. Here's Wheeler. Good, there's some, hit, yeah. there's some heavy hits in the middle of the field here. Some of these girls have got brilliant technique. Nutty. Putting in a high kick, Upton will be under pressure again here, and again, she takes it very well. I have been so impressed with Tamika Upton this afternoon. Every touch that she's had has been very, very classy. And she, that was just safe as houses under that high ball with some serious defensive line coming at her. Amy Turner hit hard on that occasion as well. Here comes Meg Ward. And they put her on her back. Stinging defence from the Dragons. Amber Pilly going for a run. A few metres short of the halfway line. Goulds. Her highest thoughts on the field now for Brisbane. 
Last tackle here for the Broncos. 10 metres into Dragons territory. Racine McGregor just puts it in behind Steph Mooker. Takes it well. And good tackle. McGregor in there leading the charge. Along with Mariah Storch. Ruan, not a lot of Mariah Storch, but she'll be one of the biggest hitters in an RLW. She's a very physical player. She's also got the ability to play in that hooking role as well. So if Lavinia needs a little bit of a break, which, you know, it's quite hot out there. She's doing a lot of work defensively and she's scheming around the ruck. So she has the ability to push into that position there. And she has an excellent tackling technique. Options here for Brittany Braley. She was looking to the left and went to the right inside the 40. Nutty with the kick. It's getting away there from Chelsea Baker. She has it covered, but it was a good kick there from Kimura Nutty. Oh, a good chase too from the Dragons. And we saw Lavinia Gould has come from the field. Meg Ward for Brisbane. Wrapped up by a former teammate. Yeah, the two wingers getting in there and doing some work, helping their forwards out. A couple of willing runs. There they go into Dragons territory here through Amber Pilly. The, the structure of their play and their football awareness and what's needed at different times. Look at how skillful this girl is. Whoops, she's going to be on a teammate. Go down. Yeah, it will be the penalty now. Yep. If she went down, she'd have been okay, but... Rona Peters, it was, that came from the field and said Lavinia Gould is still out there, but a penalty here for the Dragons. See the time clock there, 23 minutes and rising. It's 30 minutes each way, so we're only we're less than seven minutes out from half time. Another opportunity here for the Dragons. So they'll start this set 10 metres into Brisbane Territory. What do you want? Saw Clint Gutherson, Parramatta captain there on the sideline. Nicely dressed. Mitchell Moses tying up a little bit. I look a bit frisky. No mistake here from the Dragons. Federica. No sign of nerves from the Parramatta players there on the sideline. Having a laugh and a joke with each other. There's a turnover. Uh, that game coming up later on this afternoon, the elimination final. Yeah, big day for that man, Mitchell Moses. Most of the attacking structure comes from him. The game is refining all the time. Oh, got another error. A couple of mistakes starting to come into it. Has been very physical this half and in the warm conditions, Ruan. Mm, yeah, the heat and fatigue looks like it's starting to play. A little bit of a role in the decision making and the uh, ball security aspects. Unfortunate there for the Broncos that they just got the ball back from giving away a penalty earlier on. Now they're going to have to defend their own line. Five minutes left till half time. That sunshine out there is absolutely brutal though in the middle of the field. It's the Golden West Ruan. <laughs> Only a tough survive out here. It's much cooler in Cronulla. Yeah, not like you coastal chicks. <laughs> Shaley Bent on that occasion with a good run. Now for the Dragons, Weatherall. Good attacking platform here for Matty Studden. Now Vete Welsh into the line. Almost got away from them. Gets a pass away. Penitani, a loose ball. It'll be play on here for the Dragons. Federica has it. Watch out if she starts to wind up. Nine away from the line. Penitani. Now Vete Welsh. Centre field here through Bent. Brittany Braley from dummy half, just held up the pass. Nutty, another grubber kick in, Upton does well. She's been great under the high ball, this time handles the one along the ground. She's a very, very classy outside back there, Tamika Upton. is so beautiful to see her move and to find herself in the right position at the right time to defuse that kick was fantastic. I think that's Keely Davis that's on in the middle of the field there, dominating 
with a nice takedown for the Dragons. Are the girls doing much in the way of wrestling training, Ruan? Yeah, we do do a little bit. We've started bringing it a little bit more into the game uh, just to control the ruck speed in general. Not a huge amount of emphasis put on it, though, as you can see by a lot of football that we've seen this afternoon. Baker goes to Briggenshaw. Nice kick from Briggenshaw. In fact, it was a beautiful kick, but unfortunately for her, she was just outside the 40 when she kicked it. It was a great kick from Ali Briggenshaw. Let's have a look where she steps. Oh. Yeah, it's one of the adjustments to this rule. We brought this rule in many years ago in the NRL, but I think a 40-20 is the same as a 50-10. I reckon if you can kick a 50-10, uh, it should be exactly the same result. And for the girls who do a 40-30, a 50-20 should also get you the same result. It's the same length kick. Yeah, girl down injured in the back play here. Was this the kicker? Might be Lavinia Gould there who is down. Oh, is it? Injured? Yeah, when, when we introduced the 40-20 the rule back in the 90s, uh, I said we should have a 50-10 too, but it, it, they didn't want it to be too complicated. But I think it's easily applied. Well, speaking of the wrestler, it looked like she might have got her neck caught in a weird sort of crusher position there, Lavinia Gould, from one of her ex-teammates. She's getting checked now for the movement through the neck. She didn't look comfortable coming off the ground, but she did bounce up, which is a good sign. Well, with beautiful hair like that, why does she wear a headgear? <laughs> Maybe to protect the beautiful hair. Keep her beautiful hair. I, I get mine ripped out a fair bit. So. Yeah, and that's why I looked at the wrestling techniques, see, because I could see girls were getting them like that. Big hit from her ex-teammate. Zuila Fotumawala. She's up in the hands there of Jillaroo's trainer, Carly Jenner. Looks like she might be coming from the field too, Salter. She will be departing the scene. For, for a possible HIA here. Yeah, the, the bench is trying to signal, yeah, there we go. It is an HIA, so it will be a free interchange for them. She'll have 15 minutes. Well, we've got less than uh, three minutes now until half time. Gus, you were talking about the 50-10. The I know in the Intra Super Cup this year, they've been trialling the 20-40. If you're yep. struggling to get out of your own 20 to put a, a kick in, we've seen a couple of them throughout the, the season where halves have on tackle three or four, thinking we're not going too far here. Let's try to get a, a set of six down the other end of the ground. And that's the ultimate gamble. Coaches won't be voting for that rule. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think any kick that, that, that covers the four grids, I think if you can kick it that far and get it into touch, it's not an easy thing to do. Then you're deserving of a repeat set. It just it just opens up to more attacking football. And what it also does, it makes the opposition wingers have to hang back to protect it, which means you've got less players in the defensive line in your own half of the field. You can run the ball. Which is what the Dragons are trying to do here. Late in the half. I've got to say, the defences of both sides have been very good, well organised. They've only had the two tries, and it's not as though they haven't moved the ball around, but the defences have read it pretty well. And he's starting with the kick. The kicking games have improved too. Some of the, some of the kicks we've seen today have been terrific, including from Kimiura Nardi to produce the first try for the Dragons. Chelsea Baker here for the Broncos. There's only been, I think, one or two kicks that have gone straight to the fullback. Taryn Aiken on the field. And as usually her way, Arnie Briggenshaw has taken all the attention away from herself through the first half. She's really a second-half player. She times her run to perfection. Just threw a little dummy then and nearly sneaked through. She tends to just keep moving the ball, running them around, and then wait for her opportunities late in the game. Puts a little kick in here. 
Jess Sergis has, has it for the Dragons. You see, she was angling around Ruth, creating the extra play on that left-hand side then. Yes, you could see that the uh, Dragons had three defenders to cover a good 25 metres, and Ali called it. I thought she might have tried to run it here as the Broncos give away a penalty through the try scorer Amber Parasol. She's back on the on the uh, ground, so it looks like the Broncos are going to go with a rolling rotation for their middle forwards, keep them fresh, which is probably a good idea in this heat. Well, only 40 seconds to go till half time. It'll be closer to 30 by the time they get this ball in play. Not much to do. Dragons can do from here. Very evenly poised the two teams. I know the scoreboard says that, but the run of play says that as well. Keely Davis with a strong run there for the Dragons. And now, probably time for just one or two plays to win the half. Will they try something here? The Dragons. Stutton goes to Nutty is for Tumawala. Well handled on that occasion by the Broncos' defence. Last play of the half, Nutty. Surges gets the uh, ball free. Still alive here for the Dragons. But Tumawala has it. Now Matty Stutton puts a crossfield kick in for Mooka. Ward had it, dropped it. They cleaned up. That'll be half time. Phonetic end of the half. I mean, Mooka wasn't all that far away from claiming that kick. And at the break, we're all locked up at four all. The Broncos led early. And then the Dragons hit back through Shakir Tungai, who scored a try late in the half. Welcome back to tonight's coverage of NRLW. It is a second half action now, about to get underway between the Dragons and the Broncos live at Bankwest Stadium. Four points apiece, and it's over to Peter Vassalvis. Thanks, Grace. Tight game, this one, four all. Good news is that Kezi Apps is back out on the field for the Dragons. And I see that Lavinia Gould is also on the field for Brisbane. Two key players for either lineup. Brisbane to kick off to start off this second half. I was watching on the dressing room cameras in both dressing rooms at half time. Very intentive, attentive, very intense type conversations to coaches. We're having with the two teams. Thank you. Now that we've got the kicking tee, we'll be able to get things underway for the sure second half. Vital for both teams. Those two key players are able to take part in this second half, having both passed their HIAs in Kezi Apps for the Dragons and Lavinia Gould for Brisbane. Strong run from Federica. It's been good this afternoon. Very dangerous with the ball in hands. Release now. Don't Hold. Will the game open up in this second half? I expect it would given the conditions. I think the Dragons are going to have to. There's just no way through this middle of the field here with these South Brisbane defenders. Gee, their, their technique is good and they hit so hard. Can you get down the edges of the field, try and use their athleticism and run them around a little bit. This whole set of six has just been one out running, and every time they run, they get belted. Now she's lost the ball. Ooh, penalty. Well, that's a bonus. Back on the mark there. It's a bonus for the Dragons. Just back on the red line. The training session I saw them this week, when they got in this position of the field, their, their ball movement was actually quite expansive. Looked really good. When you're ready, Brittany. Ready? They haven't really Hold. broken out as yet. Here's Weatherall. Madison Weatherall, she's actually come through the Tasha Gale system and for such a young player, she's very, very physical and very willing, so she's great coming off the bench for the Dragons. Davis he has played one test match. An opportunity now for the Dragons. Let's hope they do use the footy. Nutty go. Oh, now the ball's been put down after that pass there from Matty Stutton. Here's the apps couldn't handle it. Oh, 
myself for the uh, for the Broncos. Corey Parker, former NRL great for the Broncos, was in the dressing room. He's out there in the blue shirt for them. He's a trainer and also Simon Mannering, great Warriors player. He's in and around the group. It's wonderful to see the level of support that the club has been giving and the players, the male players, have been giving to this NRLW program. And I think you can see it. The girls are, as you said, very attentive to what they say. And it looks like, especially with some of that tackling, they've really taken it on board. And there is Corey Parker on the screen. He goes Steph Hancock. That's a good run. The longer this game goes along the way, it is so tight. It's it's getting closer to when Ali Brigginshaw breaks free. It's a Wells underneath it. Oh, big collision. Take it in the air. Lavinia Gould, the offender, and she has come off second best. It's a Wells might have been penalised, but it's a great take. Well, it was a beautiful take. I don't know whether he called that she took her out in the air or whether she was inside the 10 from the kick, from the gestures that he was making. It did appear that she was inside the 10 there. But Lavinia Gould, hopefully she can bounce back from this. This is her second little injury that she's picked up this game and sometimes that can play on your mind a little bit. Yeah, well, she would have been the dummy half, so I guess she was in front of the kicker. But she doesn't hold back, does she? Both girls really attack that ball with plenty of venom. Alana. Just see when Vede Welsh goes up, she turns her body perfectly facing the try line so that if anything did happen, the ball would have gone backwards. But she's a real difference out of these two sides, Vede Welsh. She's been absolutely dynamite. And when she's got the footy in her hand, she looks dangerous every single time. So keep your eye out for her to cause some trouble to the Broncos' defence. Well, Bo is actually a sevens background player as well and she is phenomenal also for New South Wales this year she came off the bench and actually played in that hooking role so she's very very versatile her ball skills are silky and as you can see there she's got a lot of ticker and a lot of heart and her athleticism is just second to none. It certainly is. I made mention too of one of the work that a lot of the male players been doing we saw yesterday in the coaches box for the Warriors Justin Morgan Last year for Brisbane, the likes of Mick Hancock and Scott Prince uh, involved uh, as well. And ex-Bulldog and ex-Storm back rower Jamie Feeney probably leading the way as far as the work that he's done in the women's game. He's been doing that for a long time. Davis now for the Dragons, nine short of halfway. Brittany Braley. She hasn't elected to run so far. Studden goes to Nutty. Kick from inside the 40. Under plenty of pressure. And good take once again from Upton. Been perfect. Handling all those kicks so very well and has been under a heap of pressure just about every occasion this afternoon. She's been outstanding. She's also come in field and had a couple of strong runs. She's a tough girl. Amber Ward now. I've got visions of Brigginshaw doing something here very shortly. It's just burned into my brain. That's there too with Vet Wells backing up what Alana said. Here is Ellie Brigginshaw for you, Gus, into the line. Gets a beautiful pass away to Annette Brander. Oh, Amy Turner, what about the collision there? Gets up, tries to go again. Turner and Penitani. Oh. The earth shook here at Bankwest Stadium. Brigginshaw, little kick. Oh, great reflexes, Brittany Braley. And she has the ball now for the Dragons. Well, that was a passage of play, wasn't it? Brigginshaw, beautiful pass. Look at the defence here. Tungai comes in with the big smash and then over the top again. Jess Sergis. Great defence from the Dragons, but Brigginshaw showing her class there. Going to the edge of the field to put Annette Brander through. Ran a nice line. It was the timing of the pass from Brigginshaw. And this is what she does. Every game I see her play, she just allows the game to work through its paces and then she asserts her authority in the second half. Here's Davis. I think the Dragons have got to keep away from the middle of the field here. I think. Brittany Braley has got to get them over towards an edge and open it up a little bit. 
Yeah, the Broncos through the middle, they've really set their rollover of middle players so that they're still fresh every single time. As we see them, as you just mentioned, getting to the edge. Tawila Fotu Moala, this is her preferred position playing on the edge, but they've moved her into the middle at the Dragons. And they shut that down, the Broncos. Nutty. Stutton, oh, a little bit of a juggle on that occasion, but they're able to regather. Last play here, Nutty. Test here for Chelsea Baker. She was standing very deep, and to get her skates on to take that one on the full and does very well. Here's Baker. Now Brisbane, their turn to work the ball out of their own half. Well, here the Dragons need to be careful. They're starting to let the Broncos' big middles own that ruck. They really need to slow them down, start controlling that ruck speed to give their defensive line enough time to get back on side. Ali Brigginshaw. Here's Racine McGregor into the line. Throws a dummy, not fallen for. Good tackle, Jess Surgis. Yeah, that's unfortunate there for the Dragons, but Jess Surgis just gave it a little bit extra in the tackle there. And Racine McGregor against her former team earns the Broncos a nice settling penalty here and Brigginshaw will start just moving her pawns around the field, moving the chess pieces, getting them to where she wants to get them. Brisbane's first penalty since the 12th minute. 6-2 the penalties in favour of the Dragons. Lavinia Gould goes to Ali Brigginshaw. And that is Mariah Storch who's had the ball stolen there. One on one, outstanding play, Brittany Braley. A key play there for the Dragons. They're on the back foot. She did very well. It certainly was, and Betty Welsh again just pushing out of tackle after tackle that gets her team up to about the 32 metre mark. Nine short of halfway here, the Dragons. Which team will be the first to crack? Here's Holly Wheeler getting a questionable pass. Well, it was more than questionable, it was ruled to be forward. Brisbane will have good field position. Is this one-on-one -on -one steal from Brittany Braley? She's a good player. She was part of the Broncos Premiership winning team last year. Made the trip south to join the Dragons along with a few of her teammates. You can just feel the, the rivalry between these two teams. One thing I have noticed is how much they're all talking. It, it really hasn't let up. Alana, have you noticed that down on the sideline? Absolutely. A few of the key players in particular, I've actually had my eye on Brittany Braley and Ali Brigginshaw. The two of them are very used to controlling their sides. Brito doing a lot of talk in the middle for the Dragons, but Ali Brigginshaw, Gus spoke about it before, she comes into the game when she needs to. She'll sit back, she'll direct. You can see her finger always up, pointing to people, directing them where to go, and then she injects herself at the right time. She's got the ball in her hand, she's setting up something now. Let's watch it play out. Goes to Racine McGregor on this occasion. On the front foot here, Brisbane. Chelsea Baker goes to dummy half. Gets a pass away. Gray with a beautiful ball to Amber Pilly. She gets it away to Meg Ward. Beautiful try, Brisbane. Ward is in. Great lead up work and the Broncos go in front. Well, this is just perseverance. They kept coming up with the offload. Dragons were getting there in numbers in defence, but the Broncos kept keeping the ball alive. Chelsea Baker out of dummy half. There's an offload here. Another surge at the line. An offload there. Looks like Meg Ward has got in for a try. Great work by the Broncos girls. Well, the beauty of that passage of play was that Ali Brigginshaw had set up her what she wanted on the left-hand side, and just like we were talking about, Ali, the defensive line of the Dragons was looking at what she was doing, and then they snuck around and went to the right side and found some joy down that right edge. How'd it look down there, Alana? Very good, Rue. A lot of support play from the Broncos, which we've seen mostly in the middle of the field. But Chelsea Baker, their fullback, has great vision. She's got a touch footy background. She saw the numbers, jumped out of hooker and set that up. But great perseverance and support play from the Broncos to get over by Meg Ward. I'm loving this hairdo. I really am. It reminds me of Andrew Johns for some reason. <laughs> you know, she does it herself too, guys. <laughs> She does her own hair. Yeah, well, I saw it before the game. It's, it's meticulous the way she's done it. It's all very tight. I don't know why it doesn't give it a headache. But 
Andrew Johns ran out with his hair coloured that day one, one day. Did too. It was a moment we all choose to forget. <laughs> She's a good kicker. She's taken it back to the 20 metre line, which is a, a long kick. She tends to move the ball back a little bit left to right when she's looking for a long one. Let's see what she does here. Oh. Strikes it, oh, heading away. away across the face of goal, but Brisbane are in front by four. Eight four, Brisbane in front. After that try from Meg Ward. Yeah, remember, it's 30 minutes each way, 60 minutes total. So we're inside the last 20 minutes here at the bottom of your screen on the shot clock. On the game clock. Good defence there, Brittany Braley, who's really got to start to take control of this Dragons team. Brisbane are rolling, no, they're right in the centre of Bakewest Stadium. Oh, another good strong hit, that one on Mariah Storch. That was from Arakura. They're just starting to get some superiority, aren't they? Making ground with every run. There's a chance of an offload there as well. Oh, that's a bad penalty, and that was on the last as well. That is disappointing for the Dragons because they were just starting to gain a little bit of control back in the ruck there. This is really giving the Broncos an opportunity in good ball in a position they didn't want to right now. Well, they'll take the tap and continue to roll here, Brisbane. And they are on a roll at the moment. Here's Gray. Good quick play the ball. Paris Hall, try scorer earlier on today. 15 away from the line. McGregor. Here's Ali Brigginshaw. Now Chelsea Baker. They're backing off Baker. You wouldn't want to be doing that too often. Sergis ends up making the tackle just a couple of metres away from the line. Aiken the dummy half. Now Ali Brigginshaw, the dummy, but not fallen for by the Dragons defence. Harakura, ex teammate in there, making the tackle. Now Annette Brandner gets the legs pumping, gets over the line. Can she get the ball down? Not in that amount of traffic. Tackle Plenty five. of breast, desperate defence there from the Dragons girls. On the 10 metre line. Last tackle. But they're under enormous pressure. This Broncos team just keeps coming. Surge after surge after surge. The red and whites hold them out for five. now. Brigginshaw, McGregor. A beautiful ball away, but this time the Dragons' defence holds firm. Arakura was in there stopping Amber Pilly. Dangerous to centre when she comes in for those runs. Well, she's a big, strong girl. Good ball runner. They elected not to kick there. They didn't want to risk 20 metre tap and seven tackles. This is tough yards now for the Dragons coming out of their own 20. Uh, they, they've, got to, they've got to trust themselves to move the ball. I just don't know that all this one out running. It appears to be playing into the Broncos' hands from mine. Just when those forwards are taking those one up, I just want to see it. A little bit of support with them. Take the, take the attentions of the Broncos off them as they start to go backwards a little bit here. But this is a good run by Kezi Apps. Yeah, Kezi Apps has broken through now. She's up over the halfway line. This will test out the hamstrings for Kezi. Gets to Chelsea Baker, who makes the tackle. Aiken in there to help her out as well. And they move the ball. They bring Kezi Apps into the game. Here's Federica. Last tackle. Numbers to the right here for the Dragons. They look to run it. Nutty. Puts it on the boot instead. They're flying through. Turtle, it's a go. What a take! Tungai in for a second try of the game. And now the Dragons, out of nothing, have drawn level. Wow, what a try. 
Oh, oh why are we checking this? Stuck at six. Try. Starting with try. Just check that. Can we just confirm there's no knock on there from Dragons? There was a cha challenge from Jessica Sergis. Dragons kick Upton, chases who's all been so safe under the high hard. ball. Sergis eyes on the ball. Oh. And it may have been knocked on. See, we killed the moment. That is a shame. We killed the moment. Killed the moment. Did it actually hit her? Yeah, it did. That is such a shame. Shikai Tunga is so fantastic at getting under these kicks and just slipping around and finding her way to the so try line. A knock on the initially by the Brisbane Upton. Broncos. Yes. Then the Dragons right number five right. knocks the ball on. We have a decision. See, I'm getting old. I don't see these things. <laughs> but if you do it at normal speed, it just looks like a spectacular moment, doesn't it? I agree with you. It's a spectacular moment. It makes the news tonight and everything, and now it's thrown on the cutting room floor. Oh, there we go. So it's still a four-point ball game. How disappointing. But you spoke about that, Gus, how when they shift the ball to that edge, it brings apps into the game and they need to be getting her with her hands on the ball in a little bit of space, not coming back into the middle where the big Broncos forwards is really starching up the centre 20. I'm booing the video referee. The video referee. So you play that at normal pace, it just looks like a great moment, doesn't it? I'm going to go and get the magnifying glass. Now they're saying that Upton knocked it on first, so the Dragons still have the ball. They do, and they're on the front foot. They've got to regroup, try to score here, the Dragons. Thought they had one, denied. Can they go over again? Nutty. Here's Fete Wells, goes to Jess Surges. She did well there, Surges, to hold on to the ball. The pass was just behind her. And here come the Broncos defenders to put her on the deck. Brittany Braley goes to Kimiora Nutty. Now Arakura. Scored a try for the Broncos in the grand final last year. Now Holly Wheeler, two metres away from the Broncos line. The Broncos defence holding firm. Tungai, Arakura on the bounce for Tumawala can't handle. Well, if you're throwing a long pass, it's not Toru Arakura you want throwing it. Landed at the feet there of Fatumawala. to ground on that occasion. I just, I don't know, Ruan. I, when I, the more I watch the game at this level, I just don't know whether the women's game yes. needs a lot of those decoy runners and a lot of those decoy plays. I think they're, they're concentrating too much on doing it well than actually playing what's in front of them. And I, I, I think if the ball movement was a little bit quicker and they were less worried about running good lines from decoys, I just might find a little bit more space. Mm. Well, I feel, especially at the moment, if you can play a very direct style of game without, you know, doing the long pass or the shift for shift, you can find some real joy just dropping a fast-moving big body under or even just someone with really good leg speed, drop them under, you can find some real joy. And by drop them under, you mean turn them back in? Yeah, turn them back in, going against the grain so that the defensive line has to reach for an inside shoulder tackle or a one-arm tackle instead. See, my old coach Warren Ryan, when someone calls that dropping them under, he falls off the lounge. Back here, back here. Here's Mariah Stortz playing the ball for Brisbane. As they reach the halfway line and then go a bit beyond through Millie Boyle. Last tackle here for the Broncos. It's with Ali Brigginshaw. It's a Wells and has put that one down. She's been terrific this afternoon, but there's a rare error from the Dragons fullback. Well, she's looked the most likely, Bethe Welsh. Her and Kezi Apps. And now a really big moment in the game. 12 minutes to go, four point lead to the Broncos, 8-4, all tries, no goals. Well, this will really test the resilience of the Dragons here. Having a try disallowed down one end to then being under attack on your own goal line. Here's McGregor, 11 away. I'm feeling a try. And they're going close here to the line. The Broncos, two metres away from it. Aiken throws a dummy. 
not fallen for by the Dragons defence. Who get up, good quick play the ball here to Peters who tries to get over the line. Runner Peters gets the ball down and Brisbane will go further in front. Now as this game has gone forward, these, these Bronco forwards have asserted their authority in the middle of the field. And they've just kept banging on the door there until they finally kick the door in. Well, Rona Peters for the Broncos, not only has she been great in attack, but defensively, she's really helped to starch up that middle. She's really one of the real leaders of the forward pack for the Broncos, I think. And represented the Kiwi Ferns on numerous number of occasions has Rona Peters, Alana. Well, she's just completely dominated the middle part of the field the entire game that the Broncos women have. But off that quick play the ball, she's a very hard person to stop that close to the line. She showed her determination and she was very happy about it once she put the ball down over the line. Chelsea Baker, after a couple of tough attempts from out wide, should have no problem from right in front here. The Broncos in complete control as we're about to enter the last 10 minutes. Study of concentration here, Chelsea Baker. She nails the conversion and Brisbane are in front by 10. The Dragons with a lot of work to do as we enter the final 10 minutes. And they're saying it's about 29, 30 degrees outside here at the moment and will probably remain that way right up until kickoff of the NRL Sudden Death Semi-Final Parramatta Reels Brisbane Broncos. So a beautiful spring day for the first weekend of the finals here at Parramatta. And it's a big one. The winner goes on, the loser leaves the country. Up now, Holly. Up now, Holly. Hold here. Hold. Aiken. Now, Mariah Storch has been very good off the bench for Brisbane this afternoon. Yeah, that's her second run of the set, and each of those runs have been about 12 metres, so she has been huge for the Broncos off the bench this afternoon. Millie Boyle. Plays it here on the last. Now Ali Brigginshaw puts up a kick. A lot of pressure flying through. Oh, what a take. Absolutely outstanding. Shakia Tungai, that time she took it cleanly. Terrific stuff. She had eyes for nothing but the ball. Then just that so was brave. fantastic. Look at this. <laughs> that is just beautiful play by Shakia Tungai. And the Dragons get down the other end of the field, score some points. This will help. A penalty. Yeah. It's coming up to eight and a half minutes to go. Quick tap from Braley. Eight and a half minutes to go. So they'd want to score in the next couple of minutes to give themselves an opportunity. Davis now. Seven penalties to three in favour of the Dragons, but they're down by ten on the... Scoreboard, Holly Wheeler, 22 away. Brittany Braley to dummy half. Here's Davis again. Well handled by the Broncos defence. Numbers way out to the left. Straight up the centre they go again though. The Dragons through Katoa out the back group. Maddie Studden although. There's the mistake and that's what's let the Dragons down throughout the afternoon. Now well, I think for the, for the Dragons girls, the thing I would take away from this game is that there are too many one-out hit-ups. Too many settling plays. There's not enough ball movement in their game. They're not bringing their halves into the play. And I think they're a side that have got great athleticism. And they're much better runners with a little bit of room to move. They've got to move the ball around. 
Now, don't forget, round two of NRLW next week. We'll see the Roosters take on the Broncos at Amy Park in Melbourne, live from 5 o'clock on 9. And, of course, there's a grand final rematch. And then on Sunday from Mount Smart Stadium in Auckland, the Warriors and the Dragons will do battle live from 3 o'clock. The first NRLW game in New Zealand, that one. The Warriors should be reminding you, Rewind, but they were very good yesterday. They certainly were. Thanks for that, Saltsy, rubbing it in. <laughs> they were fantastic. At, at home, they will be very difficult to beat. However, the Dragons do have a very strong contingent of Kiwi players in their team, so they'll have no shortage of support, I'm sure. And it's Harney. Yeah, so that must mean the Melbourne Storm are playing in Saturday down at Amy Park, I'd imagine, and Rabbitohs Friday night. Rabbitohs play the Manly Seagulls. What a performance by the Seagulls at Brookvale over last night. Lotto Land, tremendous coaching performance, but you know the players themselves, all those young fellas coming into the, an injury-riddled side and performing like that was just brilliant. And the Melbourne Storm, well, they await the winner of today's game between the Eels and the Broncos. Great football. We love it in September. That was knocked down by Amy Turner. Well, the Dragons need a try in this set of six. They need it now. No mucking around. They need it now. I think actually for the Dragons there, it was lucky that it was played at by Amy Turner because the way it was coming out of Kimi Oranati's hand, it looked like it might have even been a little bit of a forward pass. So this could be a real moment of gold here for the St. George of the Warra Dragons. You've got to move the ball. This one, Amy Turner as well. A Olympic gold medalist from the Rio Olympics in rugby sevens. Here's a strong run once again from Federica. Well, another opportunity here for the Dragons. They've got themselves in this position a few times this half, but haven't been able to score. Can they do so now as we enter the final five minutes? Holly Wheeler. No way through there. Brittany Braley, which way will she go? Goes to Maddie Stutton to the left. Just held up the pass. But hey, Wells, nice ball away. And trying to get through there was bent, but no way through. Ten away from the line. Here's Maddie Studden putting it down. Just had a little look there. Maddie going through the play in her mind before she had the ball. Yeah, they've just been a little bit clunky today, the Dragons. I think it's the brilliant defence of the Broncos that's probably worn them down a little bit mentally. Very strong, these Broncos forwards. A lot of talk about the fact that the Dragons had recruited the number of their players. Broncos won the Premiership last year. Dragons go out and recruit five of their very good players. But there are also seven of the Premiership winning Broncos players still with Brisbane. That's a a very well-drilled team. And they've also brought through a lot of players that they've developed over the last couple of years through that Queensland system. So there is no shortage of talent north of the border. Lavinia Gould has made her way back out onto the field for the last three and a half minutes. Chelsea Bake will go to dummy half now. No, no, Lavinia Gould will run in there and eventually get the ball. And here's Peters. Last one here for Brisbane, three minutes left. McGregor with a kick. And well, Pinatani will have to hurry up and get onto that one. And then the tackle made by Meg Ward. She handled that pretty well, actually. She was, this, this Rona Peters, she's a machine. And the player of the match for mine. And terrific this afternoon. Yeah, this strong hit from Amy Turner. And it was on Keely Davis. The 
thing with Rona, she does not stop. Everything she does, she gives it 100%. And she competes for every single play. As Nadi puts the kick up here for a challenge. Tamika Upton, again, safe under that high ball. She has been really good this afternoon for the Broncos on that left edge. One of those players, Rona, you've been talking about as well, too. Develop coming through from central Queensland. Born in Rocky. Tamika Upton, and she's been very good this afternoon. Well, Rona Peters will sleep tonight. <laughs> she'll be, I reckon she'll be asleep on the bus on the way to the airport with the amount of work she's done. I want someone to send a, a photo of her to me tomorrow, please, so I know that she's alive and well. I'll send a message out for you. We'll get the, the uh, proof of life. <laughs> Here's Jessica Alliston. Not a lot of game time for her this afternoon. Made her origin debut for Queensland this year. McGregor with the kick. Tungai has it covered. That Broncos chase. Still, as we enter the final minute, very good and has been right throughout the game. Who do Roosters play next week? We, we play the Broncos next week, so I have a large book of notes. Oh. Down in Melbourne, both teams travelling. Seems like riding the game. Yeah. Ruan Sims versus Rona Peters. <laughs> I'm going to go for that. I'm going to be there for that. Can you sort her out or what? Oh, we go head to head over the years. We've had a few goes, but uh, there is some very healthy rivalry. I'm, I'm going out to watch that. Yes, I just wrote down Ruan's notes. Scott Rona Peters and Ali Brigginshaw. <laughs> Then you've got to watch out because there's plenty of other strikers exactly. in this Broncos team as well. Can't focus on one player. Here's Davis. She has been good for the Dragons. Off the bench this afternoon. Nutty puts a kick in for Jess Surges. She juggles, gets a down try. Juggling effort, and it looked like with the naked eye, she's been able to plant the ball down. Yeah. No try. We'll pull the plug out of the bunker so they can't get in the way. Knocks it on into the Brisbane player. And if not, go through to ground in things, Clarky. I might have been seeing things there. And it's a little bit too little too late. Dragon's kick chase is also playing on. Juggle. Juggle yeah, into the Bronco player. Oh. No. That is a shame. Two tries disallowed for the Dragons in these circumstances, and both of them were pretty good plays at the ball, too. I hate the bunker. No fun. Boo. And the Dragon down. player yeah, knocks the ball on. We have a decision. Boo. <laughs> It'll be no try. Boo. They kill the fun. Take all the fun out of it. There's two that they've been denied, the Dragons. Great piece of skill from Jess Surges to regather the ball. She's done some brilliant things today, Jessica Surges. She's a fiery thing. Back on the 30 here. Back on the 30. Another one that doesn't shy away from the contact. She's a very physical player. Very aggressive. Who's this? Unfortunately, that looks like Tamika Upton, which is a, a real shame. She's had a blinder. She has. And got herself That caught. right ankle. Looks a bit painful. Might see if Alana can get an update on that injury for us. Well, they've only got one play left game. in the game, so we must have get that out of the way, and then they can help her off. Well, it looked like that her leg just caught underneath. Just surges. That try. This will be the last play of the game. The siren about to sound, and that is full time. The Broncos have defeated the Dragons 14 points to four. A terrific defensive effort by the Broncos this afternoon. And the defending Premiers off to a perfect start.